For those of you who don't yet know, there will be a novelization of Season 1 of The Dragon Prince coming out relatively soon. I recommend that you all pre-order it, as it is not very expensive, and it might convince Netflix to renew The Dragon Prince for another season. But what secrets will this novelization reveal? That is the question at the heart of this video. What I want to make clear is that I do not think the novelization will significantly depart from the uh, plot of Season 1, the beat-by-beat -beat progression of events. That will be the same, whatever additions they make. I personally think it would be really interesting if the novel somehow diverged from a major plot point in the show, but I do not think that is going to happen. King Harrow will die. Rayla, an amazing character, but the worst assassin in the world, will fail to kill Callum and instead join him on his adventure. Though she will not yet fall in love with him, she will realize how wrong her ingrained notions of humanity really are. They will travel around with the dragon egg until it finally hatches and reveals the adorable baby dragon Azimondius, lovingly called Zim. They will see how war has devastated the continent, and they will see how restoring peace between humans and elves will be beneficial for both species. But there is so much that the novel can do. It will be a nice complement to the first season of The Dragon Prince, and hopefully, if it sells well, we'll be getting more Dragon Prince novels in the future. I doubt the book will be particularly long. From what I see, it's only like 220-230 pages. But it will have to go more in-depth than the show itself did. The first season of The Dragon Prince always seemed a little rushed for me, having to introduce this grand world and all the mythology and all these characters in about four and a half hours of television. The novelization will fix these problems, and it will have the opportunity to drill further into the psyches of its characters, and I dearly hope it takes that opportunity. Aaron Ahas did a Q&A session about the book, and this session clears up a lot of the questions I had about the novel, though it still leaves quite a lot of space for speculation. Keep in mind that I'm basing what I'm saying here off a Reddit summary of the Q&A, so though I have every reason to believe that this summary is accurate, I do recommend that you take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. Anyway, Aaron reiterated that he and his team are still committed to Season 4, and they're still optimistic that it is going to get renewed, so take what you will about that. More pertinently to the topic of our discussion, Aha said that different parts of the novel would be told from the perspective of different characters. This is a natural mode for a TV writer like Ahas, as the differing points of view offer far more insight into the character's psyche, direct insight at least, than a more limited point of view would. Going from different perspectives is a lot more like television writing. In fact, I do not think it is a coincidence that my favorite series of fantasy novels written like this, George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series, was also written by a former TV writer. Martin, having worked in TV for over a decade and then gone to books because he wanted a vision too big to be realized under the constraints of television at the time, which of course makes it funny that the books were eventually adapted into arguably the biggest television series of the last five or ten years, 
But I digress. Apparently, one point of view character in the Dragon Prince novels is going to be Claudia, which I applaud, as we need more information about her character. While the broad outlines of her arc and her descent into villainy are clear enough, we do not get to spend nearly as much time with her as we spend with Rayla, Ezrin, and Callum. Which is a shame, as she is one of the most interesting and least clear-cut characters in the entire franchise. Do delving into her psyche via the novelization could provide far more insight into exactly who she is and what she wants. And it could provide clues for where her character is going in the future. Obviously, I am sure that there will be chapters in this book dedicated to Callum and Rayla's perspectives, but it is the perspectives of the other characters that I am most fascinated in. I want to see the corners of the world that we have not already explored. Likely, the vast majority of the audience for this novelization will be people who have already watched the show. I can imagine people going from watching the show to reading the novelization far more easily than I can see people going from reading the novelization to watching the show. I don't really see any incentive for people to pick up the novelization if they have not already seen the show. That's what I'm saying. The novelization will, Ahas clarified, be understandable by people who have not watched the show. And for the record, I believe this is definitely the right decision. The novelization should not be so opaque and filled with references that it cannot be understood by anyone who is not a hardcore fan. Still, since it is going to appeal the most to hardcore fans, I think it would just make sense to include more information that one could not get from watching the show alone. I hate to use the word fan service, as that term has acquired something of a negative connotation these days, and I'd argue not wrongly so. These days it mostly refers to sometimes fun, sometimes irritating callbacks to earlier material that amuse longtime fans but leave newcomers completely cold and not really getting it. That's not really what I'm talking about here, though. Not at all. I want to see more corners of this world. I don't need or particularly want explained to me exactly how certain varieties of magic work. That kind of ruins the magical element, at least from my perspective. What I do want is more information on the history of the conflict between humans and elves. I want to learn more about the various contours of the politics in this world. As I've said before, Season 1 spends so much time setting up the world building of the series that it does not have enough time left over to explore the implications of that world. The novelization could prove to be an excellent opportunity for the show to correct that. From the looks of things, it appears as though the show is going to venture down that path. There will be characters in the novelization who were not in the original show, at least according to the Q&A with Ahas. I hope we get more information about Teodrin and Lane. Rayla's parents, although that might have to wait until Season 4, or at least until the graphic novel coming out in a couple months that spans the time period between Season 3 and the Season 4 I really hope we get. What I want more than anything is more information about Viren. In the Q&A, they said that Viren is the toughest character to write. I hope that means that Viren gets a chapter or two from his point of view, because that would be fascinating. Though his character is kind of similar to Ozai from Avatar The Last Airbender in terms of him being a power-hungry, 
opportunistic dictator who abuses his kids. <laughs> Even despite that, the two characters are not entirely the same. Viren is a lot more complicated. Though they're both megalomaniacal, and they both lost their wives one way or the other and are alone now. But despite this, Viren is not nearly as secure as Ozai. If he had been half as secure as the megalomaniacal Fire Lord, then he never would have fallen into Erevas's web. Ozai believes he rules by divine right, and he passes that belief down to his daughter, Azula. Viren, however, exhibits a psyche rife with insecurities. Like Ozai, he has a clear idea of what he wants to do, but unlike Ozai, he does not know if he has the strength and willpower to do it. He does not know if he is the great man he wants to be. So he seeks help from those around him, even if these sources are unreliable. None of this is to excuse his behavior, which is villainous, of course, but as I get older, I'm less interested in making clear-cut moral judgments about who's good and who's bad and who we should root for and who we should declare unredeemable. And I'm a lot more interested in just impartially analyzing why people do what they do and why people think what they think. I'm more interested in the raw, inchoate chaos that is the human psyche. And if we get a chapter or two from Viren's point of view, we'll definitely plumb the depths of his ravaged psyche and come to some really interesting conclusions. If we do get these chapters, I'd probably say that they're what I'm most looking forward to in terms of what I want to see from the novel. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can, and you want to see more videos like this. Keep watching The Dragon Prince. It is a brilliant, dynamic, thoughtful, evocative show that is only getting better with time. I can't wait to see what they do with Season 4, and I dearly hope they get a Season 4. So anyway, tune in soon for my next analysis. It will be coming soon, I promise you that. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.